All right, so here we go. Um, this is going to be part combat, part narrative, part ramble, part Lord knows what. Um, man, I have been waiting for this, but not, if that makes any sense. Um, I've known this battle has been coming. I don't know if it's going to, um, you know, anything's going to happen. Like, I don't know if the Russians are going to take the... Uh, take the bridge. Remember this, I used to call this the bridge hex. Now I'm, I guess, calling it the Boog River Bridge. Um, I did, you know, I'm going to say one thing, man. I am so flippin' glad I've been uh, writing down all this ridiculous amount of note-taking. I have a complete story, like a complete record of what's been going on here. I can tell you which divisions on one, uh, at what turn, what happened, uh, like who took the hits, everything, man. It's awesome. Okay, I'm not going to look at my notes, and we'll see how it, this goes. Uh, I, what I'm going to do, actually, and I thought this should help me incorporate later on or help me add in um, my expansion on trying to, you know, the narrative, I got to get into the, you know, proper documentary stuff is what I wanted, want to do. I told Zoe, like, that's where I want to go. I'm like, I'm looking at uh, documentary, you know, film footage of World War One and stuff, and I want to emulate that uh, for part of the uh, grand campaign. And I'm still harping on it in my head. I've, I've got to contact some people. I'm going to put like an ad out in like Kijiji or whatever the heck. There's got to be people out there but uh, that would like to do something like this. Um, uh, I want to find voice actors, maybe just a couple, and see if they would uh, help me, you know, just say a little tiddly bit about whatever. And then I can just, you know, stream my film or whatever. But uh, come on, I want to do some fun stuff for Christ's sakes. Anyways, here we go. The first action that was ever seen across this bridge was in um, 01 September when the Austrians attacked this position. They were successful and they drove the uh, Russians out of here and took this position. There, I can remember, I don't know if you do, but I do. Uh, there was two separate battles going on here. There was the Boog River battle and then uh, there was the beginning. You probably don't see it, but i um, sorry, I really want to hammer home on this. Um, this was a part of Conrad, uh, I'm not saying, it wasn't specifically part of Conrad's uh, September offensive towards L uh, Lublin, but um, it obviously, this, is, this was at a time, I think in the war, where both sides were pretty naive, like still, and also full of, you know, I'm sorry, but piss and vinegar in a sense, like a lot of supply, fresh troops, not cluing into what's going on yet. It's 01 September, man. Um, anyways, the Austrians took this position. Um, surprisingly, the uh, Russians did not counterattack here due to the fact that they tried a different tactic. It's because the Austrians also took this position. So they actually were able to counterattack here and uh, eventually were able to go get to here. Uh, the next turn, uh, like I said, I'll write this down and see how wrong I am. <clears throat> 02 September, and there is also the Inklings right now, with uh, Bon, bon Ermoli's Second Army starting to, starting to crumble. Cernowitz had, had fallen, I'm pretty sure, by then, and Stanislaw was about to, uh, Brusilov and the Eighth Army were just barreling down this way. Um... And Bruderman and the uh, Austrian Third Army, I think, kind of were like, you know what, um, we've got somebody stuck out here, and the Russians are wrapping around this. Do you remember those, that, those beautiful little shapes? They're almost like a little um, Russian and Austrian yin and yang. You know? Ugh, it just freaked me right out. Anyways, so Bruderman said, you know what, I've had enough. And on 02 September, I do believe, they withdrew from this just taken position. They withdrew. I'll, I'll, I'm at, I'll show you the casualty count. I've written them all down on a little book here. Um, 
So they withdrew. The Russians obviously uh, advanced and they won the initiative on the next turn, 03 September, and attacked this position. Um, the Austrians repulsed them and on their response, they reinforced this position and started to entrench. Actually, in 02 September, sorry. Yep. Because uh, that's when it became a trench in 02 Octo October. Um, then what en ended up happening, and by the way, isn't this cool? The 23rd Infantry Division, the last lone division sitting there by themselves now, in that flipping trench. And part of this thing, when I started uh, later on in the month, when the second um, Austrian 2nd Army did collapse, they evaporated, um, and Bruderman and the 3rd Army were basically left holding the bag. It was like, what the fuck do we do now? Like, they were doing fine against one army, but now it's like, oh shit, now I gotta deal with two. And one of them's Bruselov, what the hell do you do? Um, so he started, tr you had to trust in the trench. Um, it was hard for me, man, for two reasons. One, I became both sides extremely stubborn. Um, I didn't want to give up this spot. Either one. Um... Holy shit. I, it's almost like a micro, micro Isonzo River. Um, the Russians, I think, I'll have to count it up, but they've tried, I think, four or five times. Well, they tried all September uh, to nail this spot, and the Austrians just keep kept saying, sorry, ain't happening. The Austrian, I mean, the Russians even attacked from multiple positions. Ain't happening. They lost so many flippin' troops, it wasn't funny. Um, they even continued their attack when they were unsupplied, and that was actually the worst turn for them. But uh, the turn before, actually, they did uh, more damage uh, towards the Austrians, so they were starting to wobble. Um, and just, I guess, maybe timing in a weird way, because, like, if, you know, other things had collapsed earlier, maybe... Um, Bruderman wouldn't have been able to send as many troops to reinforce that spot. He was able to. And that well, like, okay, the turn before these guys run out of supply, they lost a division. They were eliminated. I can't remember the name. The sixth, I think. Um, I'll have to check. The next turn, the Russians continued. Ruski keeps trying and trying and trying, man. And, um, but he's running out now. He's running, out, well, he's out of supply, and there's no longer, like, these crazy, well, there's, I think, still a multiple, uh, multiple position attack, but it's not, you know, not as much anymore. <clears throat> that was a bad battle for these guys. Um, the Russians took four hits that turn, and the Austrians only took one. However, the Austrians lost another division, was eliminated, and... Uh, the Russians also lost a division, so now it was becoming real, real, as far as I, I'm concerned. Um, after that, I think the Russians started to concentrate or focus their attack member over towards here. That's when they took uh, the brought the Cossack cavalry over here, and I completely forgot about the. Um, I think it was a Ken that reminded me about this uh, river. Uh, it was a monstrosity, anyways. I was like, thanks. But I mean, you know, I was like, anyways, that was bad. Um, but at that time, like I said, talk about good timing with the trust in the trench. <clears throat> excuse me. The Austrians had to start streaming away and now we're down to three strength points. Now they're going to make the attack. I hope I pop this in a nice spot. Uh, what else can I tell you? We're going to look at the CRT very quickly. I'm trying to, mind you, the sun's out big time, monster, awesome. Um, I did have some other electronic music going on in my head right now, but it was a new artist, and I was like, you, you can't trust that. Trust in the trench, do not trust in a new electronics artist, I guess. Um, anyways, it's going to be rough. I'm going to tell you what I've done also. Sorry, man. This is my story, my narrative. I am going to F with everything I can. I also want to give these guys a fighting chance both ways. Um, 
I also right now I am I it's hit a sore spot with me in the fact that I pride myself in playing the Russians extremely well no matter what flippin' game system you want to throw at me right now and I'm naive trust me um, if you want to say Chris you want to play the Russians uh, Eastern Front World War 1 1914 I am your flippin' man and I guarantee you I will try to kick your ass in a nice polite way um, I just I got a knack for it even solo wise I'm like this does not make sense. I keep like, and they're like, I read the rules and they're like, the Russians are going to have a really tough, I'm like, well, um, and I, I actually talked to Rob and it, I think it's because I, uh, it's not because of the Russians. It's because I don't understand how to play the Germans properly. Even with, when they have so many tools in their toolbox, um, they're a, uh, you have to be aggressive at the right time, I guess, with the Germans. The Russians, you're screwed. Anyways, you might as well just go for it. Uh, That's the way I'm looking at it. Anyways, look, it's bad. Okay? So remember, I have a minus five. We'll go, I'll show you the specifics. So you'll see what how bad it is. Now, I need three hits as the Russians. I have to see what you can see. Sorry. There we go. Um, so I need three hits as the Russians. You'll see why in a minute. To get rid of the Austrians from an entrenched position because they only have three strength points. I have to get some water. Um, now they will, okay, if you, to force a retreat, doesn't mean they'll be eliminated, remember, because you'll force a retreat, they'll take one third the hits. So they'll only take one hit. God, I love this flipping system, man. Like I can see, like, okay, you force this from the trench, there's still some of us alive. Love it. But, You've wiped out, you know, our beautiful place. Um, so what I've done to tweak things, hold on, like, yeah, I can, getting, uh, I need some liquid for my mouth, which is odd because I'm like Mr. Saliva, man. It's ridiculous. I often think people, I like I should walk around just with a face shield. Well, unfortunately, if I did that, I wouldn't see anything pretty soon or I'd need wind, windshield wipers. Um, okay, I'll go to the... Um, We'll talk about what's going on here. It's brutal. Five division. <clears throat> excuse me. Five divisions to one. We've got the 11th Infantry Division, the 2nd, the 9th, the 5th, and the 42nd. The only one that's at full strength is the 11th. Everybody else is at half strength. You're going up against the Austrian um, 23rd Inf Infantry Division. They're entrenched in broken terrain across a river. Minus one to the attacker's die roll due to broken terrain. Minus two to attacking across a river. And minus two to attacking an entrenched, an entrenched position. Thus, they have 12 strength points with a minus five DRM. Now, you ready for my crazy, extra, ridiculous... Good God, what the hell are you doing with a D6 die roll, just a normal CRT? So, I've put all three extra cubes in. They get the extra blank one, which is just going to be, scare the hell out of you. Ooh, could have been a red one. Uh, the extra red one's going in, and the extra green one is going in. As well as, if you want, if you want, and... It's a bad move for you. You can sacrifice a strength point like it's still going to be counted for your attack, obviously, because that's why you're doing the, the modifications, but you will lose that strength point. They are gone. You cool with that? Well, you have no choice. <laughs> oh, good God. So there you go. I hope this uh, this entire thing makes sense. Because here we go. Sweet Jesus jumping mother. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something about um, things with me. <laughs> like when it gets to here, I'm going to do it now. But <clears throat> Zoe is like, man, you have some issues this way. You have no idea how many TV shows or movies I have stopped watching. Because I'm like, nope, not going there. 
I'm too emotionally attached and not happening. I think it was Dr. Foster or something. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But anyway, so there was like 20 minutes left in the series. And I was like, nope. That's it. Not happening. So here we go. I need to do lots of horrible things with this. Uh, there's going to be people dying, man. Let's take a look. There's going to be lots of people dying. All right. So I'm at 12 strength points. And I want to... Get them out of that flipping spot. Remember, I have minus five. I am so effing screwed, it is not funny. Okie doke. Now, I'm going to stop the video just because I'm terrified of the battery, and I'll be right back. So it'll be two videos. You get the idea, I hope. Please, camera work, because this was a long thing, man.